Hi everyone, Eric at Retro Handheld Guides, and today I'm going to be showing you how to configure various Wii controllers in the Dolphin emulator. The Nintendo Wii was an interesting console that tried to innovate with different ways to interact with games. Most modern controllers have pretty much standardized around a similar design now, and mapping the original Wii controllers onto a modern control scheme is not always straightforward. In this video, I'm going to show you how to map three different Wii input controllers onto a modern control scheme to make them playable on your retro handheld device. So with that, let's take a look at mapping Wii controllers in the Dolphin emulator. So the first controller that we're going to start off with is one of the easiest controllers, and that is going to be the Classic Controller. Uh, classic Controller was used in the first-person shooters like uh, Black Ops, uh, as well as Goldeneye, uh, and that one is super easy to configure. Uh, so to configure a uh, controller, you just need to go into the cog icon, and then for us, we're going to be doing Wii Input. So we need to make sure we're using the emulated Wii Remote, and then from there, we'll go ahead and click on the cog icon. Now for this one, uh, the buttons on the Wii remote don't really matter too much uh, because we're going to be using just an extension to the Wii remote which was the classic controller. So for that one we'll just need to ensure that we've selected the extension and switched it over to classic and then from there we need to make sure that we are going to be clicking on the cog icon to map these buttons. Now for me I'm using on the uh, RG Cube the Nintendo Switch layout. Uh, it's called Retro on uh, other consoles as well so whatever it is basically your Nintendo layout uh, which is going to be mapped like this. Uh, so your A and B buttons, X and Y buttons. Uh, so this one's super easy. Uh, just quickly go over it. A, B, X, Y. They all map directly to your phase buttons. Uh, ZL is going to be uh, left button and right button, uh, start and select. Uh, we don't have a home button in this case. Left stick, obviously this one here, so left up, down, left, right, and then right stick, obviously, up, down, left, and right. Uh, left triggers, um, left triggers are these ones here, so your tri analog triggers, uh, that's just left and right, and then we'll do the same thing for analog, and then your D-pad, up, down, left, and right. And that's it! Uh, so that's your classic extension for the um, for those uh, first-person shooter type games, anything that uses the classic controller. Now, once you have your controller mapping in place, uh, in order to use it for the games, what you want to ensure you're doing is you're creating a profile because for every different Wii game, you're going to have a different controller likely uh, as there are many different kinds of controllers available for the different kinds of games. So to select those controllers, what we need to do is we need to ensure that we have a profile. So I'll click on the profile here and then we'll go down to the bottom uh, where I can save a new profile. As you can see, I have lots of profiles here for various games and uh, controller configuration types. So I'm going to click on New, and this one we'll just call it, let's say, FPS Classic. Okay, so I will click on OK to save that. And now that I have this is saved as my FPS Classic, what I can do is I can go back, and for my uh, first-person shooter games like Black Ops, long press on that game, and then click on the edit game settings. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to tell this game that I specifically want to use my Wii input and for this one emulated Wii remote and click on the cog icon and here is where I select my profile because it's going to be different for every single game. So if I click on profile I can click on my FPS classic profile. Now when I log into that game it will use my Wii classic controller setup for this game. Super Mario Galaxy used the Wii Mote plus Nunchuck combination, which was innovative for the time for the Wii uh, as a controller input, but becomes a little bit awkward when we try to map it to a standard controller layout as similar to the Xbox or the PlayStation. So here we can see the Wii Mote plus Wii Nunchuck combination, uh, and as you can see, the right hand is going to have a couple of buttons, uh, and then the left hand has a different uh, 
controller in it as well. Uh, so what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and map these so that we have our right hand with the Wii Wiimote somewhere on this side of the console and then the left hand with the nunchuck somewhere on this side. So we can see here we have in our Wii Wiimote an A button which we can map somewhere here. We have a trigger underneath which I'm gonna map to the top. We have a one and two button which I'm gonna map to here and then a plus and minus button which I can map to start and select. It does have a D-pad which I'm gonna map over to the D-pad on this side. Now when we take a look at the nunchuck, we do have a joystick, which I can easily map to here, and then a trigger button, which I can map to the top as well. So what does that look like when we try to map that in our dolphin? So I'm coming back to my dolphin emulator, and again, in order to map our configurations, we just go into these cog icon, and for this one, we're going to go into the Wii input. Now the Wii input is gonna be an emulated Wii remote, and then we'll click on our cog icon again. And from here, what we wanna do is we want to scroll down and we're going to configure our Wii Remote with an extension of Nunchuck. So the Wii Remote is that one that we're gonna be holding in the right hand, so for the Wii Remote. Our A button is that big button on the face, so I've mapped it to the Y button here. The B button was that trigger, so I'm gonna map it to my trigger on the top here as R1. And then our one and two buttons, I can easily map to B and A. The minus button and the start button can be our start and select. Now there is also a home button that was on it. I can map that to the other button that I have here on my face buttons, which is just gonna be the free button is X. D-pad, we don't have a D-pad on the right hand side. Uh, so I'll map it to the D-pad here. That makes the most logical sense. So we'll just say up, down, left, and right. Now for everything else, we can leave that blank because uh, we don't really need that for Super Mario Galaxy. When we go to our motion simulation, this is where we're going to be able to mo uh, map the pointer. So the IR pointer was a big part of the Super Mario Galaxy gimmick. So we need to make sure that we have something that we can use in the pointer and because it was on the right hand side, the most logical place to map it is to this joystick. So I'm gonna map my pointer to the joystick up, down, left, and right. Now, one other thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm just gonna to wanna to make sure that I have the relative input because uh, I found it easier without relative input, it'll snap constantly to the middle. And with relative input, it acts more like a mouse pointer. So wherever I move it, the mouse kind of stays there with my pointer. And then everything else can stay blank. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we want to just make sure that we map our nunchuck. So our extension is gonna be nunchuck in this case and then I click on the cog icon. And for the nunchuck, we have our C button, which we can map to the R1, or L1, sorry, and our Z button, which we can map to the trigger. So that's gonna be C and Z. Now the stick, that's an obvious one. It's just the stick here on the left-hand side. So we'll say up, down, left, right, and then you do need to shake your nunchuck in order to uh, access the stars uh, to go through those portals. So I'm just gonna map my shake button here to my free button on the right hand side, which is my R1 button. Everything else can stay blank. Now, remember that we do need to make sure that we save this profile. So uh, before you do anything else, you just need to make sure you just go into your profiles. And what I'm gonna do is go to the bottom here and then just for a new profile, I will save that and then name this, uh, let's say, uh, Galaxy, oops, Galaxy Profile. Okay, so now that I can, now that I have it as saved as a profile, I can use it when I want to go run my Super Mario Galaxy. So if we go back out to our games, we'll make sure that for the Super Mario Galaxy, we're using that profile that we've just created, which is a long press on the game and then go into the edit game settings. And from there, we wanna ensure that we're using the Wii input and our emulator remote. And if we click on the cog icon, it allows us to now select our profile that we just created. So in this case, it is the Galaxy profile. So that when it runs that game, it will use our nunchuck and um, Wii mote combination. Now, as I go into this game here, uh, we'll see uh, what that profile looks like and then uh, we can go ahead and uh, run that game. So 
So this is going to be our uh, A plus B combination, which is just like that. And then as we go into this game, we can see here I should have a pointer, but where is my pointer? Well, one of the things that I've found uh, through various tests was that the pointer is still there, but right now it is using the gyro, and the gyro is pushing the pointer off of the screen. If I tilt it like this, we can see my pointer now appears, but that requires me to tilt my screen, which is not going to be ideal because I don't like holding the console like this every single time and every time I tip it up, my pointer disappears off screen again. So one important thing if you're ever going to use the IR pointer that you need to remember to do is inside of your mapping for the Wii, I'm going to go back into my mapping, it is actually done under the motion input. So if I go into motion input, you can see here that the accelerometer is mapped to the accelerometer on this device. So when I tilt, when I move like this, the system is going to automatically try and push my pointer away, which I don't want. So I need to ensure that I actually remove, clear the bindings for every single one of these accelerometer settings. Uh, so I'm just clicking on them and then clicking the clear button so that I can clear those away. Uh, the gyroscope as well. Um, Useful for some games, but for Super Mario Galaxy, obviously I don't want to have all of those things input because it is going to push my pointer off the screen. So I'm just going to disable all of those gyros, and again, before I leave, just make sure that I go into the profiles, and then save my Galaxy profile again. So now, hopefully, when I go back into uh, Super Mario Galaxy... Well, again, our uh, Wii mode is on the right-hand side, so we will go into uh, the uh, main menu here. As I go into the menu, I will click on my A. There we go. A and B. And now you can see, the without tilting, the mouse pointer is here, and I can use my right joystick to map and move to my specific uh, galaxy. The last controller setup that I want to show you today is the sideways Wiimote. So the Wiimote was normally held in your hand, kind of like a remote control, but if you turned it on to its side, it becomes kind of a very basic controller, kind of similar to the original Nintendo controller with uh, two basic buttons on it. Uh, and that would be used in games like uh, the new Super Mario Brothers or DK uh, Returns. Uh, so to configure that particular remote, uh, we'll go into our cog icon and down to the Wii input again, making sure we're using a Wii emulator remote, we will click on the cog icon. And from there, what we wanna do is we want to just go into our Wii remote. This is gonna be basically the only thing that we're going to be using. So for the Wii remote, we will select our buttons. Uh, in this case, uh, our A and B buttons are going to be up here. Uh, those were the ones where the you had your big button and the trigger. Uh, for here, we're just gonna map it directly to um, the top here so we can easily access them. So my A button is my Y and my B button is X. And then one and two are going to be the primary buttons for your sideways Wii remote. Uh, so uh, one is B and two is A. So that's one and two. And then we have our start and select as our plus and minus buttons. Over here, we'll set the D-pad. So the D-pad is just going to be our D-pad here. Uh, so D-pad up and down is up and down and left and right. Everything else here is basically going to be uh, nothing. The next thing we want to do is just make sure that we have our motion simulation. Motion, motion simulation is our uh, IR pointer. So we'll make sure that we have a pointer uh, over here on the um, up and down axis for your left uh, joystick. So we have up and down, left and right. 
And then we also need to ensure that we have some shake um, because uh, games like Donkey Kong Country and um, New Super Mario Brothers did have shake functions. So I just mapped those shakes to the various things here. So we have uh, X shake is just right uh, the bumper and then the Y and Z shakes are just the triggers. Uh, so that's the easiest way to just do those various shakes. Everything else is left blank here. Now, similar to what we saw for Super Mario Galaxy, you just need to make sure in order to use that IR pointer correctly that we have set the motion input, remove all of the accelerometer and the gyroscope um, mappings uh, so that we don't have our pointer pointing off screen when we're not holding the device in our certain position. And then for our extensions, we're using none because the only thing we really need is the uh, Wiimote, so there's nothing attached to it. And down here is where the magic happens, the sideways Wii Remote. So it's gonna take all of our mappings and then just flip it on the side. That way our up and down buttons are going to be mapped appropriately uh, so that it knows that this is up, this is down, right? So we need to ensure that we've mapped the sideways Wii Remote. And then from there, we will select our profile and ensure that we've created a profile here for our uh, sideways Wiimote, right? Uh, and then I already have that, so I'm not gonna create a new one. I already have one here for our sideways Wiimote. And now using that, I am able to play games, or sorry, map that particular um, configuration by long pressing on my game, editing my game settings, and then for my Wii input, ensure that I've select my sideways Wiimote profile. Thank <laughs> you.